All right, so the new ASUS ProArt P16 has come out onto the market, but nearly at the same time, we have the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G16 with the Ryzen CPU. Which one is right for you? In this video, we're gonna talk about the usability, build quality, and performance of each of these devices and ultimately help you make a buying decision. Now, the first thing I wanna do is look at the overall build and chassis design. Now, one thing I noticed right off the bat from the chassis is of course the slash on the G16 and the simple ProArt logo on the P16. Now, as we go ahead and look at the bezel on the screen, there's this nice little extra detail on the bezel. It's like this little tiny micro notching all around the bezel of the screen, which is a really cool touch. Now this does not come out on the G16. It is a very simple, just you know, plastic or rubber piece that wraps the bezel on the G16. So when you think about some of the nuances and differences, we're going to have some features that are more creator focused for the P16 and then the features that are more gamer focused for the G16. And we're gonna dive into those here. Now, what I wanna look at first is the build of the laptop as well. So as you close down the lid, and you put the laptops side by side, they are the exact same thickness. Very, very similar chassis, if not the same base chassis with different features packed into them. Now, as you go ahead and flip the laptop over, you can see that the bottom cover on the P16 and the G16 are, I mean, nearly identical. We have the same flashing lights appearing on the back panel. We have the same ventilation appearing on the bottom. Uh, one of the big differences, of course, is on the laptops, we have Zephyrus on the back panel versus ProArt on the back panel of the ProArt. So there's more badging nuances than there is actual design since they're built off of the exact same chassis. Now going ahead and taking a look at the ports, you can see on the left side panel, we have the same exact ports. And we're looking at the Zephyrus versus the Asus ProArt P16. Same port selection on that side, flip them over, exact same port selection on the left side, no port selection on the back side. So right now it appears that we have the exact same laptop. Now as you go ahead and we open and close the lids with one hand, see they both open and close very easily, going to have the same thickness on the screen, the same screen bounce, the same flex, everything is the same. Now let's go ahead and pull the laptops around and we can take a look at the interior of the laptop. Now, as you look at the interior of the laptop, there are a few little differences. First and foremost, you have the classic ROG power button, this hexagon-ish shape versus the standard rectangular power button on the P16. We have the secondary bar of keys on the top here. We have our ROG key, mic mute, and then volume buttons whereas we do not have that on the P16. So all of your function buttons will be here on the standard top row. As we look down into the keyboards, you can see that we have the exact same keyboard setup. Arrow keys, copilot key, space bar, alt, windows key, and then we go up to the top right, delete, backspace, same sizing, a little bit different wording. You can see we just have DEL on the ROG where we have the full word delete on the pro art. So like I said, there's these little nuances. Now, as we look at the trackpad, that's where we remove any sort of nuances and we get into the big difference. We have the ASUS ProArt dial on the P16, a very nice tool to help boost your workflow and productivity. You can go ahead and program this to scroll through your timeline. If you're in Photoshop, you can increase and decrease the brush size or change brushes. It's a very nice tool to allow you to not have to get in on all the different menus, let's say inside of Photoshop to find the tools that you're looking for. You have access to them right here from the ASUS dial, programmed effectively to your workflow, and it becomes a very, very great asset to you. Now, another thing to point out, of course, is the fact that we do have a pen compatible touchscreen. This is compatible with the ASUS Pen 2.0. That is not going to be found on the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G16. We're going to have the same 3K display. However, we're not going to have the pen compatibility or the ASUS dial over here on the G16. Now, speaking of those displays, there are some slight nuances between them. They are both OLED displays. However, keep in mind that the ASUS ROG Zephyrus G16 is a 2.5K OLED display at 2560 by 1600 at 240 Hertz. So definitely a gamer focused display. 
We have 498 nits of screen brightness at 100%, sRGB, 97%, Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at its LTE of 1.47. Whereas the Asus ProArt P16 is a 3K display, 3840, by 2400 at 60 hertz refresh rate, 498 nits of screen brightness at 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 1.09. So a little bit of a difference in the display. If you're a gamer who's also a creator, you might wanna to lean towards the Zephyrus G16 as it would allow that higher refresh rate for gameplay. Whereas if you're looking for a higher resolution and slightly better color gamut range, you would consider the Asus ProArt. But more than that is the pen functionality. That is for me the huge game changer between these two devices, the dial and pen functionality. Now looking at the bezel, you can see that they both have webcams on the top bezel. Here's a quick sample so you can hear and see for yourself. This is the webcam on the Asus ProArt P16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G16 from 2024 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, looking down at the keyboard deck, they both have upward facing speakers. You can have the same speakers, but just for the sake of the video, here's an audio sample of each of them so you can hear them for yourself. And lastly, we were talking about the keyboards. And I want to go ahead and give you an audio sample of me using both the keyboards and trackpads. They're both very quiet. They have a very satisfying click. And the keyboards have a nice medium key travel. It's not a long gaming laptop key travel. It's more of a mid-range between you know, an Ultrabook keyboard and a gaming laptop. So here's a sample of me using both the keyboard and trackpads on each one. If you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the P16 and the G16, head down in the description below and click those links. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, another thing I wanna point out is the battery life, and these are gonna be insanely similar. We have the Ryzen AI9 HX370 in both laptops, RTX 4070 in both laptops, and then 32 gigs of RAM. Now, keep in mind, neither laptop has a higher maximum graphics power. They both tap out at 105 watts of maximum graphics power, which is really nice in helping the decision because now we're really just looking at the panels and the trackpads. A lot of the other things are going to be the exact same. So it's really nice that if you want, you know, a different panel, G16. If you want different, you know, touch sensitivity and the dial, P16. So it, it, for the first time, I feel like the differentiation between these two devices was done very well. So that way each user could clearly see which one is right for them. Now, one thing I want to point out that we missed during the initial look at the chassis, we talked about the thickness, but we didn't really talk about the weight. And you can see that the weight and thickness are the exact same. So I just wanted to point that out in case we missed it. And of course, these are both all aluminum chassis. Okay, now going ahead and flipping the two laptops over, let's talk about the upgrade path. For both of these laptops, you're going to be able to upgrade the M.2 slots. There are two M.2 slots available in this device. One occupied with a boot drive, one unoccupied, which is really nice. However, both laptops have the RAM soldered to the motherboard. But keep in mind, the ProArt P16 has an opportunity of 64 gigs of RAM, which is a really nice upgrade, especially for creators. If you're working in Photoshop, if you're working in 3D modeling software or Premiere Pro specifically, RAM is really helpful, especially in the timeline of Premiere Pro, having more RAM gives you a smoother playback. Now keep in mind, 64 gigs of RAM, to my knowledge, is not available on the G16. If I'm wrong, please comment below. Let me know that I'm wrong so we can verify that information. But 
To my knowledge, 64 gigs of RAM is available P16, not available in the G16. So again, an advantage of choosing the P16. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the benchmarks to see which one has better performance. And as we're getting into the simulated benchmarks, you can see that we're gonna be neck and neck. I mean, we have the same CPU, the same GPU, the same RAM. So neck and neck in regards to those details. Now moving on to the real world benchmarks, let's take a look at 3D modeling for the P16 and the G16. You can see that both laptops have really solid scores. However, the G16 seems to be edging out the P16 by just a little bit. I cannot tell you exactly why. I am not quite sure why. One of the reasons that I can think through in my head, just off of listening to the devices, is that there seems to be a little bit more of a thoughtfulness towards keeping the device a tad bit quieter. During the 3D modeling benchmarks, I noticed the fan noise was a little bit higher on the G16 versus the P16. So there might be a tiny bit of throttling taking place there so you have a slightly quieter device. Now looking at Photoshop, these two devices are pretty neck and neck. You still have the G16 leading out at 8,866, but closely behind is the P16 at 8,343. So close, close, close call between these two. Now looking at video editing, you can see that the P16 has a two minute and 29 second 4K export time. It's a nine minute 4K clip put into Premiere Pro, export it out at full quality settings versus the three minute and three second out of the G16. Surprisingly enough, uh, we have better results for video editing in regards to the export time of 4K. Looking at the G16 for 6K B-RAW, 15 minutes and 34 seconds versus the 16 minutes and 57 seconds out of the P16. So right there, if we go back to 6K B-RAW, you see the G16 start to take the lead again. Now, as we move on to playback, for 6K playback, B-RAW, zero drop frames for the P16, 6K B-RAW, 6K red footage, 403. Same thing for the 6K B-RAW of the G16, zero drop frames, but then 6K red footage is 952. So slightly better playback out of the P16. And remember, this is the 32 gig version. This isn't even the 64. I've tried to put in an order for the 64. Hopefully it'll come in soon and we can do a full test of the 64 gig model of the P16. So really excited. Punch for punch, I'm gonna go through a few concluding details on which one I think might be best for you. If you're a gamer, the 240 hertz refresh rate is by far a big advantage to you. Having that faster refresh rate, of course, during gameplay is gonna keep you from getting killed time and time again. Whereas the 60 hertz is a pretty big killjoy if you're a gamer. That just really isn't even a de facto standard gaming laptop. Definitely clearly indicates that this is more focused towards creators. Now, I do have some people comment in the comment section and say, well, you know, creators need a higher refresh rate too. And I mean, yeah, sometimes, but overall 60 Hertz is pretty much solid for creators. If you're looking at the pen functionality on the device as well, that's a huge advantage for creators, whether you're working inside of Photoshop or you're doing some design work or you're working in Illustrator, it's so nice to be able to have that opportunity to do the pen on the device. The dial, I have been testing out the dial time and time again over the past couple of weeks, get into my workflow. And it's amazing how when you start using it, you don't realize how much of a workflow burden it is to not have it when you have to go then click around in different panels to change things. Your hand just like rests there. And though the dial, I want to kind of work on like the sensitivity and how fast it moves. Overall, as it's set from the factory, it's very, very useful. There's a few things I'm like, man, it turns down a little slow. I wanna make my brush larger in a faster amount of time. And so there's like little tweaking nuances that I'm still working through as I'm you know, getting used to and testing out the model. But overall, man, that dial is so helpful in the space of productivity. Now you will have a little bit better performance in 3D modeling, like I mentioned, because of the extra little bit of fan noise, meaning that the components aren't gonna be throttled as much as it seems like they're being throttled a little bit in the P16. But as you saw in the benchmarks, it was like minimal. Because when we got into video editing, we saw better playback, 
in red footage from the P16. Let me know what you're considering purchasing. I would go for the P16 all day because I'm not a gamer. So all the features in the P16 make way more sense for me. Remember that there are links in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for tons more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.